We're going to learn this morning about arts at the Capitol Theater. I'm joined by the principal, Sarah Mallory, audio-video teacher, Dan Bover, and also a senior from Norwich, Teon Kulos. Folks, good morning. Thanks for coming in today. And principal, let me start with you. What exactly is arts at the Capitol Theater? Arts at the Capitol Theater is a magnet high school focusing on the performing arts. We offer five areas of the performing arts, acting, uh, which also includes vocal performance, audio video, creative writing, dance, and theater production. Uh, students come to us because they want a different high school education. They want a unique learning environment, small classes, and they, they want to really focus on not only the academics, but the arts as well. So it's not, you know, arts as an elective. It's, a, it's fully part of their everyday um, activities at ACT. Sir, what's the school's philosophy? What is it you're trying to impart to the students at Arts of the Capitol Theater? Um, our core values are respect yourself, respect the work, and respect the community. So uh, obviously r respecting that everyone creates in a different way, that we express ourselves through different ways, that uh, we should be active members in our community and we try to get involved with things locally and p produce productions and invite the community to, to come to them. So really a, a general word of respect, but we try to have the kids reflect on that in three different ways. And one of the students you brought with you, tell us about Tayon. Tayon is uh, one of our seniors this year. We're going to be very sad to lose him. Um, he is an acting major. And he has uh, just kind of blown us all away with his uh, community outreach and involvement in our school community, local community, and um, our student council. He's been a really, really great member of that for the past couple of years. Tayon, good to come, uh, come in. Thanks for coming and joining us for today. And tell us why it was you decided to pick Arts at the Capitol Theater to go to school at. Um, I think that the school appealed to me um, because it's such a small school and also you get to uh, dedicate yourself to what you're passionate about so I'm obviously an actor and it's nice to spend the day talking with other people who are so dedicated to their art all different types of arts and it's interesting because you get different perspectives and you get exposed to different stuff um, and all that together is the real reason I'm uh, this I decided to come and I'm still here when did you get the acting bug um oh man um when I was younger, I remember watching uh, pieces of theater and stuff on TV, and I really was just like, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. And it wasn't until I decided, okay, maybe I do want to pursue this, um, that I went to act, and it was really, it hit me. It was like, man, this is, this is something powerful. This is something special. And I think moving forward, that's something I'm always going to have. Aside from the academic curriculum at Arts of the Capitol Theater, how do you feel that you are now a better actor than you were before you came to Arts of the Capitol Theater? The training specifically has helped. Um, we go through uh, different things with vocal work, uh, physical work, and all that put together uh, helps us recognize uh, what it truly means to play a character. We also go through character analysis, which includes uh, doing some background research on the time period of a play or a musical, and really going in depth to how exactly um, the character would act or portray themselves. Sarah lamented that this is your last year at Arts of the Capitol Theater, so let's look ahead. What is coming up for you in the years to come? Uh, well, I'm always going to hold theater uh, very close, but I actually want to uh, go to school for political science and run for office uh, someday and uh, try to do what I can to uh, get youth involved and impact the world. Um, but like I said, theater will always stick with me, so I'm not going to drop it. I'm going to continue to uh, be an advocate for it and more opportunities for people to join in. And Dan Bover is here today, audio-video teacher at Arts of the Capitol Theater. And Dan, good morning. What are some of the aspects of audio-video that you try to impart to your students? I think some of the, the basics uh, so to lay down a good foundation for students to, to be able to go to the next level if they choose to go to college and do film or animation, game design. Um, you know, we cover all the aspects of, of video, lighting, uh, editing, intro, camera, operation, etc. But I think some of the really cool stuff that we do is, is being able to fully integrate uh, the arts and the academics together. So I can take a, 
um, 3D animation class and, and pair it with a math lesson. Um, a lot of the students are, are so um, involved in learning the software that they're, they're kind of forgetting that they're learning the math at the same time. So it's not, you know, it's not strictly just math. They're trying to create things in three-dimensional space. So, um, you know, I, I think all, all the artists and the academic staff, we have about 10 classes that we teach. So we have the opportunity to see the students every day and kind of create, um, you know, for, for my discipline, create uh, films, animations, and, and just um, have students collaborate with each other and, and kind of learn how it is to, to work with each other. Dan, were you one of those guys when you were Taeyeon's age that you ran an eight millimeter Bell and Howell projector? <laughs> I knew I knew before Taeyeon's age um, <laughs> that I wanted to be involved in television, um, but I wanted to be in front of the camera. And then when I went to school, I quickly learned that I had a uh, face for behind the camera. So um, I got involved in the. That editing. works on radio. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it works on radio too. <laughs> but I just got involved in the in the technical aspects of it and and kind of. Um, Really excited to me to figure out how cameras work. What was the what was the premise of of uh, eight millimeter and, and sixteen millimeter and and um, y you know back when I started it was you know the editing process was not as as uh, uh, nonlinear as it is today. It was all linear. It was cut, edit, cut, edit. You know it was like real and reel to reel and, and two knobs. So um, just the what the kids have today to, to work with the technology is just unbelievable well so. you know about kids today in technology is it a challenge for you to stay ahead of them because sometimes they might know more than you do yeah that's a great thing I mean there there, <laughs> there, there are uh, times particularly in a lot of the classes that I teach if I if I teach a, um, a game design uh, we did that last year first semester for the first time and and many of the kids in that class had a, a just a, a, a better foundation than I did. I mean, they were more into it. Um, so we learn together. There are a lot of the aspects that we go through that we collaborate together and we work on projects together. So and in classes like that, I actually will create with them. I'll, I mean, we'll, we'll, I'm going to do a game too, you know. So it's, so it's a big learning process that we're all learning together. We're not just sitting there lecturing and telling them what to do. We're, we're really kind of researching. We're, we're you know, sitting there and... and trying things that may or may not work, and, and we hope for success. Sir, Dan mentioned math in his answer a minute ago, and I'm just wondering about the academic curriculum at Arts of the Capitol Theater. Yes, they're learning theater, but they're also learning reading, writing, arithmetic, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so we, we offer a full comprehensive high school curriculum that is aligned with the state uh, requirements and the state standards as well. Um, the, the spin on it that we're really proud of is that we're always trying to find ways to connect to our students, to relate to them, and, and most of the time we do that through um, integrating the arts into the academic areas. So they present their learning through the arts. They can choose how they present their learning. They work in small groups. Um, you know, sometimes they might be studying a specific country and history, but they get to kind of research and explore that through the cultural side of it and th through the art side and kind of figure out you know, what do these people believe in and what is their art form and, and really dive into that. that. Um, so we're really proud of the fact that our students get a really personalized, individualized experience at our school. Is your role as principal at Arts of the Capitol Theater the different or the same as, let's say, a principal at a public high school? Um, <laughs> I, I think it's probably different. I'm involved in the productions as well, so I, um, I try to, to be really active in everything that we do in our building. And I, I'm also an artist myself. I'm a dancer, so I started teaching at the school, um, and that's how I got, got my, my foot in the door in education. Um, so I uh, still try to choreograph the musicals each year, and that's something that I, I um, really enjoy doing, so... I, I plan on doing that again this year, and then up till this year, I still was teaching a, a dance class, um, so this will be the first year without doing that. But yeah, I would say um, very much involved in the artistic side of things, making sure that the productions are uh, performance ready and ready to go and help support um, 
all staff, the, te the academic teachers and the artistic uh, staff as well, in any way that I can. Now, Tayon's from Norwich. What is your range of where you draw students from to Arts of the Capitol Theater? So we uh, take students from all of Eastern Connecticut. Um, we actually have students all the way down in New London right now, um, and then all the way up to Putnam, Thompson area. Um, so we have students from over 27 different towns. Um, some of them have over an hour bus ride each way, and they're, but, you know, Tayon was talking about the commitment that our students have, and our students are truly, truly uh, dedicated to being there, and they make it happen. Is that indicative that New London does not have a school like Arts of the Capitol Theater in Willimantic? Uh, New London does have arts magnet high schools. Um, these students have just chosen to come to ours, so... Tayon, tell me what a typical day is life of an ACT student. Um, for me, it's waking up at uh, 7 o'clock to make the 710 bus and getting on the bus. And... You wake up at 7 and you're on the bus at 710? Man, you move fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I get to school. Um, one of the, the benefits that ACT has is free breakfast. So um, I can always stop by and get something. Um, from there, we... Uh, go to our classes and we have uh, like I said it's pretty small classes so it's nice in the morning where the teacher will kind of talk to you and wake you up a little bit um, and I believe we added homeroom this year so that's gonna be an addition um, from then on we go through some of our classes um, with lunch in study hall um, intervening with other classes um, towards the end of the day um, and ending at 425 your principal, Sarah Malley, mentioned earlier this morning about the five disciplines at the school. Even though you might have one particular focus, let's say acting, do you learn all five of those in your curriculum? Yes. Uh, for the musical, for example, um, we uh, we do dance, uh, we sing, uh, we get to see behind-the-scenes work. So a lot of the times uh, we'll see Dan and his students work, we'll see the theater production students work. And they work, and they work, and they work. And it's it's very cool to see them really get into it um, because that's what makes the show. So it's very cool to see. I'll, I'll, I'll say, too, is like one of the great things, too, is that like for a production, whether it be a dance show or, or a theatrical performance or, um, you know, all our students run the shows. They do the lighting. They do the set design. They do the building. They do the costuming. They do any type of technology that's needed, um, sound or projection or so everything is student run. And so, so everything that, that we do is really student-centered and student-run. So, And the art staff and the academic staff kind of just coach and mentor these students along the way to, to have a performance-ready um, production uh, for our shows. Our, our last play in the spring, there were several actors that actually helped out with the set and you know got their hands dirty and building the set. And uh, it was a really cool collaboration. We had a really impressive set uh, for Getting Out, which was our spring play in uh, May. And it took a lot of man hours, but the, the kids came together, and it was a, you know, a school-based community project, which was really something cool to watch. Would you assign like a field trip for your students at ACT, Sarah, to see another production, to go to the Bushnell, to go to the Wyndham Theater Guild, go to CRT, go to Goodspeed, go to Broadway? Uh, we Well, we took them all to New York to Broadway last year, which was really, really cool. It was a great experience. Many of them had never been into the city. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, we, we try to get them to see at least one production each year, whether it's the Hartford Stage or the Bushnell or Broadway, like you said. Um, last year was was very memorable for a lot of them, though, taking them into the city. Tayon, were you part of that trip to New York? Yeah, we uh, went to go see The Phantom of the Opera, something <laughs> I have... Never, I, I didn't see it. Um, I was surprised, but uh, we got really good seats, which is also really nice. Did the chandelier but, crash on your head? Oh. I, it looked like it, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was looking up. Um, but, you know, it, it's very interesting when you get to see, like you said, another production, because you, you know what goes on behind the scenes at school, but to imagine a production like that, it, it's pretty cool. And, Sarah, I was intrigued by what Tayon said earlier, the fact that, okay, he, he, he loves the theater, but he wants to be a political science yeah. major in college. Is that typical with the ACT students that maybe they're not going to continue on in a professional aspect or a career aspect when it comes to theater? 
Yeah, I, I think it's uh, split. Many of our students do decide to go into something um, that's not necessarily directly related to uh, the arts, but, you know, political science, I think you have to be an actor in some ways these days. So um, uh, I think they take the skills that they have learned and they're able to, uh, to apply them um, in, in a broad range of things. Many of our students are related, are interested in psychology and they go into related, arts related, um, you know, therapy or counseling, things like that. So, um, and then we do have students, Dan has a cohort of students out in Chicago that, you know, yeah, are <laughs> really into film and diving really deep into that study. And um, yeah, we've got um, typically a lot of the, the, the film students and the AV students, um, they go to college for it. They'll go, we've got students go to Emerson, um, a couple students go, um, one to, to Montreal Film School, another University of the Arts in, in England, um, so and Chicago School of the Arts as well. So there's there's a lot of students that that this skill kind of translates into uh, jobs, you know, like in in their field. So, so taking that a step further, Sarah, what is the profile of a typical ACT student? We're looking for students number one who want to be at our school. Um, you know, we, we get a range of students come to coming to us freshman year. Some of them have already had experience in their arts, and some of them haven't. And I think that the number one factor is that we want students that want to be there. We want students that are committed to learning, that are open to trying new things, taking risks. Um, we want students that um, like to learn and explore in different ways and might have creative, um, you know, creative minds. Um, so we, we can take and mold and shape and, um, help transform any student that is really committed to, to being at our school, to being part of our community and really dives deep into what we have to offer. School starts on August the 30th. Are you still enrolling students for the upcoming school year? We are still enrolling students for the upcoming school year. Um, and so if you're interested in the arts, if you're interested in what we do, give us a call. I'll give you a tour. Um, I'm in the building every day, 9 to 3 right now. So come check it out. 465-5636 to set up a tour or a shadow day. What's a shadow yeah, day? Yeah, so a shadow day is once school starts, um, if you, maybe you're an eighth grader going into eighth grade right now, um, as an eighth grader, you have to decide what school you want to go to, what high school you want to go to. Um, so we set up shadow days for eighth graders to come in and shadow a current student. Um, they get to see kind of the, the school day, what it's like. As Tan mentioned, we start at 845 and go to 425. It's a little bit longer of a day, so we like our students to kind of you know, come check that out, see if that's for you, um, and see what that looks like. And then we also like them to see uh, the different uh, range of classes that we have to offer so they really understand what their day will look like. Tayan, have you been shadowed? You multiple times. Um, <laughs> it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll uh, walk through my day with the student um, and explain, uh, like, you know, this is this class, this is what I'm doing, here's what we're up to. I think it's interesting, Sarah, um, you asked Sarah about, uh, you know, her role as principal. And just by hearing her talk, it just reminds you, you know, she works very hard to make sure that we, we take that dedication and turn it into something special and important. So the shadow gets to see that. And a lot of the times they'll say, whoa, you know, this is intense. Like, yeah, you know, it's work. Um, it's very cool to see that. And Sarah, free enrollment for Connecticut students. Tell me about that. Um, well, we just like to make it clear that we're a public magnet school. So, so, you know, a lot of people still in our town don't understand that, that we're a free high school. We, there's no tuition um, charged to the parents. It's We're a state and town funded. So it's just really important to mention that um, because many people still, even though we've been around for 13 years now, still still get confused and think that we're a private school. But we're, we're a public high school. So what pays the bills? <laughs> like I said, <laughs> state and uh, town funding. Yep. And Dan, audio visual, typical day for you. Is it? It's, is it kind of fun? Because it sounds like you're doing different things in each class. Oh, it's definitely fun for me, and I, I think, um, you know, and I can, you know, I, I can definitely speak for a lot of the artists, the staff. Is that? Is that? Um, you know, we we are pretty jazzed about our 
our uh, you know our content area. So when I come into class uh, in the morning, we always have things planned. We're working on projects, but not every student is working on the same thing. There'll be different things going on even in the same class, and maybe different assignments. So not everything is just like channeled to do one thing. Kids are learning multiple different things with multiple different students at one time. So. Um, yeah, and it's a learning experience for me, too. I mean, there, there are some things as technology progresses pretty quickly. Um, you know, the research involved, the new equipment that we're able to buy, um, the projects we work on, the, the, the contests that we enter, and, um, and we have a, a pretty good presence, you know, in the community. We do a lot of different work for the community, you know, for businesses. We try to get out and make, you know, web ads or television ads or YouTube ads or um, for different... Uh, different uh, businesses on Main Street and beyond. You've won awards for that too. We've had some of the students in here with some of the great production you've done. Yeah, we, we've um, we've been fortunate. We have a, a really good relationship with the Department of Motor Vehicles, um, and they have a yearly contest which is um, centers around distracted driving for teens. And uh, every year they have a new theme, and and uh, the task is to make a 25 second public service announcement, and and it's judged by. Uh, the governor on down along with travelers and then at the end of that process there's a an awards dinner and ceremony and it's 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 uh top notch so our kids have been fortunate that we've been we've been able to attend that for several years so Dan is part of the mission to expose these students to all aspects of performance arts and maybe they want to go as an example they want to be on stage down the road but by learning the other aspects of it they may have more of an appreciation for what goes into making them look good on stage. Yeah, we, we have, um, you know, a lot of my classes are open. They're not just for video majors. So I have a lot of acting majors, dance majors, um, uh, writing majors. I have a code talk class with a writing teacher that we do an advanced film um, class. But their dance students will take a garage band class of mine so they can learn how to cut their music for their show. Um, acting students will come in and say, listen, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what goes on behind the camera, maybe learning how to edit, but I also want to get more experience in front of the camera and acting. So, um, you know, when we have kids that bring in their own makeup, they design their own costumes. So it's a, it's a, it's a really cool atmosphere and just a, a, a really collaborative um, atmosphere at the school. Sarah, we talked a moment ago about some of the awards that ACT has won. Dan talked about the video production awards. What other awards in the last couple of years is your school known for? Uh, over the past couple of years, we've uh, won several awards at, with our writing department, um, which is something we're really proud of. Um, we've entered the Scholastic Writing Competition um, and have done really well with that, as well as uh, the Connecticut Writing Project has done some awards through their program as well. Um, our, our students uh, have entered poetry, short fiction pieces, um, and, and our creative writing teacher, John Wetmore, has done a really great job getting them out into several different venues to perform their pieces, uh, open mic, mic nights at UConn, um, and different um, collaborations in the, in the community that they've been able to share their work with. And speaking of the colleges, what is your collaboration with QVCC and Eastern Connecticut State University? Um, our students, uh, as they you know enter junior and senior year, are able to take uh, college courses for free uh, at Eastern or QVCC, uh, and they earn college credit as well as high school credit for those courses. Um, so it's something that if students are, are doing well academically and can handle it, they're um, able to earn those college credits and enter college you know, a little bit ahead of the game, which is important. Tayon, what do you like the best about Arts at the Capitol Theater? Oh, man. Uh, the community, I think, is the, the strongest um, aspect of the school. I mean, I, I walk into school, and I'll be tired and mopey, and they'll still be there, arms open, like, you know, hey, let, let's have fun. And that's important, especially when you're working hard and you're tired and you don't want to do stuff. You always have someone encouraging you and saying, hey, let's bring this, let, let's bring this to action, um, especially on stage. I mean, there are times when I don't feel like performing or I don't feel like doing something, and you'll still have the encouragement of not only the students but the staff as well who will say, you're capable of this, go ahead and do it. Good answer. He didn't expect that question, but he <laughs> stepped into the plate and hit it out of the park. And speaking of community, 
What about the 50 hours of community service part of the graduation requirement? Tayon, what types of community service have you been involved in? I uh, was honored to be involved in helping feed 10,000 kids uh, with AJ and Sam, um, who are here, uh, who are also who are also community outreach presidents. Um, but we're also here last or uh, last school year to uh, talk about kids care, and um, that was that was excellent, and that was really cool to see the community get involved. Um, I've also done uh, community cleanups. Um, we've also reached out uh, to the state to discuss uh, magnet school funding, so we try to um, integrate our voices as well. Um, I believe there is another program at school, a teen outreach program, which is helping with the community garden. Um, so all these opportunities of uh, students have to um, gain community service hours. They can also usher. There's also um, haunted house. Um, so. I've taken advantage of a lot of them, 49.5, so I'm happy. Um, <laughs> only 30 minutes more, uh, but yeah. One of the other uh, things that we take on is we do the Relay for Life in October, so we have a really strong team that commits to the Wyndham Re area Relay for Life, and our students um, are able to raise a lot of money for, for a good cause and participate in that as well. Sarah, who is the faculty? Who are the faculty members that you've got that are teaching these students at ACT? So what we're really proud of is that we have, um, you know, professional artists that work in collaboration with us as well. So they're, they're, our students are learning from professional artists who have experience in the field. Um, and our teaching staff, um, you know, our academic teaching staff are top-notch certified teachers, but they're also really interested in the arts. You know, it takes a really special person to teach at ACT because you have to be able to integrate the arts, you have to be able to relate to our students, you have to commit to the different projects and collaborations that we have going on. Um, so our teaching staff are top-notch. Um, they're they're, they help motivate our students. They're committed to art themselves. They express themselves through the arts. Um, you know, some of our academic staff are on band are in bands. Um, you talked about the Wyndham Theater Guilds. Uh, you know, there a couple of our staff members have been involved with them too. So, um, it takes a really special person to teach at ACT, and uh, you know, they're they're really high class people. You can tell that they they're not just there to teach. You can tell that they're there because they really are passionate about the subject and they want to um, get more people involved and uh, show what they know. And Dan, is one of the attractive things as far as being a faculty member at ACT, the student-teacher ratio, which is six to one, these small classes, I gotta think a teacher likes that. Yeah, definitely. Um, the class sizes, um, you know, that's the average and, and uh, it just gives the opportunity for some really student-centered um, learning environment so you're able to like again what, like I said earlier you don't have to assign the same assignment to every student you're able to kind of go with what the students strengths or weaknesses are to kind of help them improve or to grow even more at what they're good at so kids are able to to create freely without being kind of you know saddled into one, doing one thing or the other so that's really one of the one of the great the great things about the school is the is the student class size how fast is the audio video field changing? And by that, I mean you are teaching students how to do things in 2017 technology, but in some ways, maybe by the time they get out of the real world, this might actually be old technology. So you've got to really stay cutting edge, don't you? Yeah, we, we try to update our, our equipment um, every couple of years. I know that we just made a large investment um, you know, and, and new down with the AV group is and our floor is all Macintosh run. So we, we are loaded with iMacs and, and la iMac, you know, and, and, and uh, MacBook Pros. But um, we update our software constantly. Um, we have a really good IT department in Hampton that, that helps us out. Um, but our cameras are, are updated. They're always, um, you know, we have a two black magic um, style cameras they're cinema cameras they run on on solid state drives you know so that's a higher technology instead of SD cards when we f when I first started there years ago everything was tapes you know we used uh, mini DV tapes now we don't use tapes anymore we use SD cards or solid state drives so um, everything is is it goes pretty quickly and and the things that we try to learn the kids research when we buy new equipment or update new uh, update our existing equipment our students research it so so they make the recommendations to me and then I'll research further so they are getting that knowledge 
by putting the the effort in to find out what it is that we need and what what it, what's going to best suit our our needs going forward. One of the things that Dan does really well too is he has the kids really problem solve uh, and work through learning the software. So it you know he's not standing up there telling them what to do. It's it's having them kind of really struggle and find the solution for themselves. So that could be applicable to you know in the future if they were presented with a an updated version of a software or something changed. You know they they have the skills that they need to be able to to work through that on their own. And tell me about just productions in general that ACT puts on, including productions in your theater that are open to the general public. You try to do that frequently, don't you? Yeah, we we have a, a, a large number of productions. <laughs> um, uh, it seems like we we the first couple of months are a little low key, and then we take off running. So our first um, big production or show is showcased in November. It's um, kind of showcases what the kids are working on. Um, it's uh, kind of highlights each area of the performing arts that we have. Um, so each department um, enters something into showcase. And then we have our um, fall musical. This year we're doing Jesus Christ Superstar. That's the first weekend in December. And then we have Coffee House, which is for our writers. We have Video Fest for our uh, AV students. So it's a night of movies and animations and you know, last year Dan had the kids play their games live time during Video Fest, which was pretty cool to see. And it's on our big screen in the theater. Um, we normally have popcorn. It's, it's a nice night. Um, we have a student dance company uh, showcase. So students choreograph um, the pieces and their student lighting designer. So it's really nice collaboration. Um, we have a dance fest, which is faculty choreography. And we have our fall, or sorry, our um, spring straight play. We haven't picked that play quite yet, but um, it's it's a, a normal a straight play, no music. I'll bet and you don't know this, but are you aware this is not the first production of Jesus Christ Superstar at the Capitol Theater? When I began at the old studios back in 1970, working for WILI, Capitol Theater was a couple of doors down from us, and I would say it was either 1971 or 1972, they had a production of Jesus Christ Superstar at the old Capitol Theater. Now, this was not a theatrical thing. You know, you didn't have the actors on stage. It was more of a rock musical with a band up there on stage, but, you know, that was a huge hit at the time and i remember sitting in the capitol theater watching that so now you oh. got the actual full production That's coming so up in cool. november right yeah yep our first weekend of december so yeah we're really excited about our, our students uh, we're really involved with picking that show so they're really excited about it and uh hopefully we can fill the house tay are you a dancing guy you, you put down some steps oh <laughs> man uh i took hip-hop last year it was not pretty um <laughs> But no, uh, Sarah works with us, and it's funny. Um, my first musical was uh, the Mockingbirds Empty Orchestra, and we created it. And there was uh, we performed America from West Side Story, and I could not get this one move down, and we kept doing it for like 30 minutes, and I just couldn't get it down. And the worst part was they recorded it for the documentary we were making, and so watching back, I'm like, oh man, that looks so easy. Um, but, you know, she negotiated and said, well, let's just do this and make it easier. It came out pretty well. <laughs> well, there's a couple of aspects of dance. One is whether you can put down your steps, but the other thing is the choreography where you've got to do it with other people on the stage right. doing their thing, too. How much of a challenge is that for you? Um, it's It depends on uh, the musical, for sure. Uh, for Sister Act, um, I w didn't have to dance, but you could definitely tell that people, um, their energy kind of flowed off each other. Um, so people would kind of move depending on how everyone else was feeling. Um, but for me specifically, the challenge is dancing and uh, either singing or saying my lines because it's, you know, my focus is not always the best. So I'm dancing and I kind of forget it. Um, but yeah. Now, it's not That's... just you being on stage dancing, but as a student at ACT, now, are you able to, have you learned how to choreograph? Can you set up a dance routine for other people to do? Me personally, no, but that's just because I'm me. But other people, I've, I've seen them uh, set up some really, really clean dances um, for Student Dance Company um, that's highlighted, um, and you get to see the students work. 
You know, it's funny too, Dan, I, people hear theater and they're thinking live productions like we're talking about now, but do you have some of your people, including video or audio people, who've used their talents from ACT that have gone on to work in television or in movie fields, like at a TV station, for example? Yeah, um, as a matter of fact, I was, during the summer, I got a, a text from a former student um, who started off at ACT as a writing major, then kind of switched over to uh, AV, but was more interested in the audio portion. So um, he went to Drexel when he graduated, um, and we had lunch a few weeks ago. And um, he went to Drexel, graduated. He's doing the master's program there, and he should be done this year, but he's uh, got a lead engineer job at um, iHeartRadio in Philadelphia. So um, yeah, a lot of kids that, that end up working in television, we have kids that have actually gone through the acting program and, and um, have worked as professional actors are still working as uh, professional actors as well. So, yeah, there's a path. You know, there's a there's a path um, in our content area for students to follow if they want to get involved in that in that field professionally. So the first day of school is August the 30th, and they are still accepting enrollment and applications. And, Sarah, how does that process work? If someone decides that they'd like to be a student at or send their student to ACT, how does the application process set up? Um, if you're looking to enroll for this school year, the first thing that I would do is call our office immediately, which is the number that you've been saying, 860-465-5636. Give us a call. We'll set you up with a tour. You can come in, meet with me, um, and we can uh, help you fill out the application. So that's uh, you know, something that you would want to do immediately if you're looking for this school year. Um, if you're looking, you know, down the road for, for the following school year, uh, we talked about calling, setting up a shadow day, um, and then filling out the application. We also have an audition day. It's in March. We call it audition day. It's a, a meet and greet. You come in, you get to, to meet the other students that are looking or interested in the area of the arts that you are. Um, you meet with the, the director of your department. So, you know, the AV students come in and meet with Dan, and they kind of show Dan some of the, the projects they've been working on. They talk about what, you know, what skills they already have and what they're looking to learn from our school. Um, and then um, we have uh, a short interview with myself or um, the school counselor to kind of determine what type of learner the students are, and that's... Um, then we send out our acceptance letters in April, but that would be, you know, the long-term application process. But if you're interested in coming for this school year, give us a call, shoot me an email, come on over, we'll give you a tour, and we'll get you ready to rock and roll for the school year. And free enrollment for Connecticut students, and they are still enrolling for the upcoming 2017-2018 school year. Information also is on the web at eastcon.org slash ACT. Interesting stuff this morning from the principal of Arts of the Capitol Theater, Sarah Mallory, Tayon Kulos, who is a senior from Norwich, and also Dan Bover, who is an audio-video teacher at ACT. Thank you for coming in. Good to see you today. Thank, Thank you. you.